<laughs> so I had just finished making my giant cooler comparison video when Optimum Tech released his, which I don't want to follow that guy. He's amazing. <laughs> And on top of that, Jerry emailed me like the same day and he was like, Hey Josh, would you like to review another cooler? And I said yes, because I like Jerry and I like Scythe products. Although I didn't want to make a cooler that my YouTube idol just finished reviewing because that seemed a little bit silly. So go watch Optimum Tech's video on this cooler first or instead of this video, but if you still want to listen to what I have to say, I guess stick around. So the box came pretty banged up, but it did a good job protecting the cooler, but other than that, not much to talk about, just a boring cardboard box, but inside the box, I was greeted by this beauty of a cooler. I was actually impressed with how good looking it is. Now I will be honest, the finish quality is not the same standard as you would find on a Thermalrite product or a Noctua product, but that doesn't mean that it's poor, it's actually quite good, just not supremely excellent. But it's okay because it makes up for it in styling. This cooler looks the part. I love all the different black and gray tones, it has just enough of the silver accents, angular shapes. It's a cool looking cooler. <laughs> Looks aside, I have to say the thing I was dreading most was mounting it because big coolers generally have big problems associated with mounting. And like I said, I was tired of mounting dozens of coolers for my video review. The last thing I wanted to do was run into problems, but there were no problems. I didn't even need to use the instruction manual. It went together beautifully and a lot of the parts were kind of pre-assembled for this motherboard, so it was quite smooth. Speaking of motherboard, I'm using the Asus Z390-i because if you want to benchmark a cooler's compatibility with a motherboard, this is the one to do it with. It has giant heat sinks on it which get in the way of everything. Really, if you want to keep all the heat sinks on it and have a proper fin orientation, you got to use a little cooler like this guy. But the Big Shuriken actually works flawlessly with it. You don't have to take off any heat sinks. On top of that, it has two RAM cutouts. Now, I measured the bigger RAM cutout. It looks like you can install modules up to 40 millimeter in height, which is 10 millimeter over a stock bare dim. All right, so it looks good. You can install it easy. It has great flawless compatibility with your motherboard and decent compatibility with your RAM. But how does it perform? The bottom line is that it actually performs magnificently well. The audio tone, I think, is great. It runs very quiet, even under full stressful load, like Prime 95, small FFTS, which nobody should actually run. I ran Cinebench on this 9700K and it actually kept the clock rate above 5 GHz with my standard fan curb. That is to say, quiet. Very impressive. My next move was to go into UEFI and set the fan to max RPM, and even then it had a tolerable tone. I mean, it was actually pretty darn good. In fact, I usually use other fans I know and am familiar with to benchmark new fans, but I never felt the need to actually take this one off. It's really that good. So do I have any complaints for this cooler? No, actually not. Even the price at $45 is <laughs> a steal. I expected it to be more in the 60 to $70 range. And I have to be honest, I was looking to throw a couple stones at this just to get even with Jerry for sending us to Optimum Tech before he sent to me. Jerry, I thought we were friends. But no, I have to give this cooler five stars or whatever I measure in gophers. It's perfect. It's perfect cooler. <laughs> I wish I could say something negative about it because I hate looking like a shill for you, Jerry. <laughs> Peace, guys. Oh, but I will shill for myself. Uh, use the Amazon affiliate link if this cooler does interest you and uh, toss a couple pennies my way.